Hi, welcome. My name is Adeline. Welcome to my corner of the internet. Today I'm going to show you how I did this makeup look. I figured out this look of um, probably at the beginning of this year in 22 and I just felt like, ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> so I start with the eyes. I'll show you how I put those things together and end with the rosy lip. So if you're interested in seeing how I put this together, how I use the products, stick around and I hope you'll stay around for longer and subscribe. All right. Let's get to it. <laughs> so I always love to begin with the MAC Paint Pot in the shade Painterly. Dig into here like so. And then just place it all over the lid. I love to start at the lash line and then I make my way up into this inner corner and then all the way up top to my brow bone. Cause I'm really creating like a blank canvas I'm covering my veins and everything, but also I'm making sure that, that everything I put on my eye, eyeshadow, eyeliner, everything is gonna stay in place. And you can see the difference right now. I'm gonna go into my personalized trusty palette. I love to use Saint makeup. I use a wide variety of makeup, but this is one of my favorite tools because I can customize it to my own desires. I wish so many other companies would do that. So I'm gonna take this shade right here. It is called Oak. It is a good cool toned brown. And so it gives that more like taupey color. And I just think it's super flattering. You see where that there's that fold right there. So I'm gonna put that eyeshadow in that crease. I'm sticking to windshield wiper motions, especially cause this brush is so soft and it's the right shape to blend. And it fits like the size of it actually fits like how big my eye is. If you have a really, really teeny cute little eye, you don't have a ton of real estate around your eye like I do, you might still like this one, but you also might prefer something smaller. Okay, so we have that baseline of where we want that color in the crease. I'm actually gonna leave the mobile lid alone because I just like that nude kind of color. So now I'm gonna add some black eyeliner. I'm gonna use the nude stick, this is called the magnetic eye color you can use it as like a base eyeshadow which would be like really bold because <laughs> it's totally black i love to use this as an eyeliner because it really stays in place super well it goes on creamy and it sets in place really well so it doesn't transfer as much as some others do i like to move my head along with my hand to make it easier Instead of just going like this and like contorting my arm funny, I move my head. See how I do that? To like make it easier to get into that, that like straighter line in my eye. So maybe consider that to help you get your eyeliner on a little easier. When I have that line on just hugging my eyelashes, I take this cute little smudger brush from Bobbi Brown and I actually soften the edges so that I don't have to worry so much about making it perfect. And it just has a nice like softened buff look that I think is a really nice style. The lid is really bright and soft. The crease has some depth, but it's kind of like a mid range color. And now we've got some deep, like the darkest color at our lashes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add some good mascara. My lashes aren't in the best shape right now, but that's okay. I'm gonna use the Tartlet Mascara from Tarte. I think it's an excellent lifting mascara. Good volume. It's a pretty awesome and unique formula, I think. See for how short and kind of brittle my eyelashes are right now, it lifts them pretty dang good. Okay, so we've got some definition on our eyes. Now I really wanna kind of smooth out my face. I have quite a few breakouts lately. It's just life and I'm trying to figure it out, but I don't really know why my skin is unhappy these last couple of years. And I have a little friend that wants to say hello. Hey, baby, baby. Say hi, Dax. This is Dax. 
This is my parents, sweet little Pomeranian. He's a little boy. He's two years old and he came to say hello. So <laughs> He's a lovely little chappy. I love to start by um, brightening my under eyes. And I, this is just my trusty favorite. I've been using this for several years now. This is probably my fourth tube, I think. I love using the shade Light Neutral. It's just the perfect tone for me. You can see here, I do have quite the grooves and I do have discoloration. So I take the doe foot and I focus on where that groove is. I don't go like the whole way. I just focus right in here. And it is a very concentrated opaque formula. I'll put a tiny daub right there, even though I'm gonna put on some foundation. I just wanna try and soften that blemish a little bit just knock back that red. So I'm taking a dry sponge. This is a beauty blender. I do have another one that I love, but this is what I grabbed. See how that just really, really softened that? So I'm gonna use that tip of the beauty sponge to get into that natural groove. And I'm just using gentle pressing motions. I do not rub it around. I just don't recommend that. You can smear the product and you can get streaks and I just feel like this really presses that product in a lot better. See, for me, that's such a joy to brighten my under eyes. I just love it. Now I'm gonna come back to my palette. So if you saw on the lower level, those are for most of my eyeshadows. This one I use to set my under eyes sometimes. It's called a vanilla powder. This is actually my foundation, my contour, and my bronzer. This shade is called Aura. It's my winter color. And this contour is olive, and this bronzer is Bella beautiful beautiful colors so i'm going to dip in here put a little bit on the brush and then i'm going to focus on the center of my face again similar to what i did with my under eyes where i'm just pressing it in and i just use very soft to medium pressure don't ever use hard pressure especially when you're using um just products on your face like if if you're thinking of maybe if you've painted before in your life with oil or acrylic like you're not going to be aggressive because it's going to be harder to get that pigment the paint to really sit down where you want it to because if you're pushing too hard you're actually pressing it off away from the surface it's already kind of neutralizing you can still see, see some freckles and things coming through which i am totally fine with because i want to look human i don't want to look like a mannequin <laughs> um but it's still softening things and I just feel a little bit more, a little bit more confident. See, I have veins here. I like to neutralize those. Because that redness can really detract from the color I'm putting on for fun, like on my eyes or if I'm, you know, blush that I'm going to put on in a minute. So I like to neutralize that red so it doesn't detract from the color I want to express and play with. And areas that I don't have much to cover, I will just use whatever is left on the brush to go over it because I only want just a hint of the color of the foundation on there just to kind of blend in and make sure it really marries with the areas that I'm focusing more of the foundation on. But don't feel like you have to have like an even layer all over your face. You probably don't need that. And so I have quite an owie right here. So I'm going to dip in little con more concentrated spot and then just try and <laughs> give myself a double chin and then just soften that just a little bit. Bam! I love neutralizing <laughs> blemishes and things. Mm. See there's not much going on here so I'm putting just whatever is left over on the brush. Now we have the even color all over the face. I'm, I actually forgot my brush, so I'm going to go get it, but I'm going to contour my, my face, which really is just me emphasizing my bones. So I love this shape, this oval shape. I find it's really helpful to get into the nooks and crannies of bone structure. So I'm getting really, really low, but I can still use it all. Put it on there and I'm hugging the base of my cheekbones, like the bottom of it. I'm hugging it like we're just best friends and I'm tucking it up into my hairline as well. So I don't want it to just suddenly stop. Um, it just doesn't, it looks disjointed when you don't blend it back up into your hair a little bit as well. 
I'm using just my phone to record. So if I'm like looking this way, it's because I'm just using the phone and what I see in the camera kind of a little bit as my mirror. So but I'm trying to still look at you too. I'm not chiseling out my forehead the way I chiseled out my cheeks, but it's still carrying that color across the face and the eye just picks up on it naturally thinking, oh yeah, that color is all around the face and not just in one little spot. So those are the two main places I focus on. The last one is actually just the bridge of my nose. Again, I want a little bit of that color in the center of my face. So one thing I do is I just take this little finger here, just the very edge, and see where there's the edge of the product in the pan. I just put the tiniest bit, if you can see that, can you see that? Tiniest bit on the, the tip of my finger. And then I see how this is very bright and you start to see a natural shadow. That's just where I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the contour. So with a very light touch, I'm just gonna go, I like to put it up in here because I think it's just kind of a cool look. And I'm just gently, with the lightest touch, blending it in to where that shadow already naturally is. If you can't tell, I do have my eyebrows microbladed, which is like that semi-permanent tattoo. I have a face tat. <laughs> um, and so what I normally do, since it's been several years since I got it done, it's, it's quite faded now, as you can see, quite, quite faded. But it still gives me that excellent blueprint that helps me a ton to make it really, really quick to put a little bit more color in. I usually use a pencil, but today I was feeling a little bit more bold. I'm just in that mood. So I'm going to use a brow kind of more marker. This one is from Glossier. It's called the Brow Flick and it's in the shade brown. I will say, I think it's a little too dark. I think they need like a neutral light brown that's just really, really soft because this one comes off as like a deep, dark, dark brown, and it's just a little severe. And so I feel like they're really missing that color. This makes quite a difference, doesn't it? I use this one from Laura Mercier. It's actually called the Secret Brightening Powder for Under Eyes. I put a little bit in this lid and I'm gonna take this pointed brush and I'm just gonna pat that in there. So I get that on there, tap off the excess. Now I'm gonna put that, <laughs> try not to block you, put that powder just under the eye, a very, very thin amount. Now I'm gonna add some mascara to the lower lashes to complete the eyes. Okay, so now we're gonna do the two final touches to add some color. I am going to use this pink and a tiny bit of this bronze Dior palette to do my blush. They are basically like highlights, like highlighters, but I love to use the pink one as a blush because it just adds the color and the luminosity at the same time. And I just think it's really, really beautiful. So now I'm gonna stick to the tops of my cheekbones and like the apple of my cheek here. And I'm gonna use a gentle swirling motion with this small little fluffy brush you see there. And then as I move, you can see some glow. I always prefer a more luminous blush myself. So you can see that difference where it adds some pop of color. I love to emphasize my cheeks and to put a lot of color in there. I think it's fun. Final touch is to do a pretty lip. I love using a rose colored lip for this kind of like black soft taupey eye. I think it's just a really, really beautiful pairing. So first I'm just gonna take this clean towel that I've had on my lap and I'm just wiping off any a foundation that got onto my lips. I really like to have a clean lip before I put a lip product on. I'm gonna use this NARS lipstick. It is called American Woman and it's a power matte lick, lip pigment. So I'm just gonna give it a little shake because it is a liquid. I'm gonna grab my mirror. And I'm gonna be careful opening it because it's a liquid. And it has a really interesting doe foot. It's really pointed and firm. There's no flexibility in it, which I think makes it easier to use to be more precise to put it on. I'm gonna make sure my lips are dry since it's a liquid lipstick. I'm 
going to outline my lips first. I use a really soft touch as well. Meaning like I have a good grip on the lid here, but I'm like lightly touching my lips so that it's very easy to glide. And I've done the outline. I then use what's left on here to fill in the lip. And then I do this. Of course, I'm gonna uh, finish the line up here. I would say this formula sets in place really well and fairly quickly, but not like cement where you can't play around with it. Like for example, it's starting to set, you can see like that, right? But it's still wet enough that I could correct the edge there. And it's really long wearing. I can wear this through eating and it stays in place beautifully. This is a really great product. I'm gonna do my hair since it's, I washed it and I actually added some pink into the highlights this morning. So it's really bright and fresh. But this is the makeup look. You could add some false lashes if you want, but I think it's a fun look to have in the tool belt of like, what do I feel like today? This is one of my favorite looks. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.